All the holes are drilled, the edges are ground, got the corners rounded. Might take a file to it just to clean it up a little bit. And then uh, next, countersink the holes and tap them. I take this Miller's Falls breast drill and just countersink those holes. Doesn't take much. Just removes the burr. Makes it so that the thread starts easier. And when you have a thread in there, since the first thread is actually countersunk below the surface of the plate, it's not very easily damaged. And all I have to do is loosen the chuck a little bit, take the countersink out. I like using these little single point countersinks. Uh, it's a holdover from my toolmaker days. They work really good. They're easy to sharpen. And uh, they hold up really well, even in tool steel. Since I want to tap these to 5 16 18, I'm using a 5 16 18 plug tap. Plug taps because it has a long lead-in thread. It's a two flute. Two flutes sometimes called a machine tap, and people call it a four flute tap, a hand tap, because it's supposedly easier to use. I've not found that to be true. I won't argue with them. For me, the two flute plug tap starts easy and cuts a good straight thread. Now this is a case where I always use a little bit of oil. Doesn't need much, just enough to wet the thread. Taps are amazingly strong. They can take a huge amount of torque. But if you put a side load on them, you'll snap them like a piece of glass. When you run a tap into a piece of plate, quite often the first thread will pull a little bit, but that countersink means that the that pulled thread, that first little thread, is down in a pocket, so it doesn't stick up above the surface. It doesn't allow itself to be damaged, and makes a nice starting thread too. A little pocket aligns the front end of the bolt, starts it into the hole especially good in blind holes. Just a little bit of oil on it. Hardest thing to do is to get the tap started. Once you've got that done, the tap itself is going to try and pull itself down to the center of the hole and that lead is going to make it want to cut straight on through.
can see I'm using my left hand to kind of act as a pivot and hold it straight while I turn it with the right. I'm trying to make sure that I hold it straight up and down and that I don't put any twist on it. Because like I said, it'll handle a lot of torque, but if I put a side load on it, I'll snap it. Dull taps break too. You'll put too much load on an individual tooth and it'll pop that tooth off. So you can always sharpen your tap a little bit if you're thinking that it's dull. It only works a few times. I mean, I've sharpened a tap at the most four times. But when you're in a pinch and you really need to do it, it works like a charm. That's four, four more to go. You might wonder what kind of oil I'm using. Well, this particular oil is called Croil, K-R-O-I-L, and the reason I'm using it is what I got in the can. Pretty much any lightweight oil will work. There are lots of cutting oils out there. found that the thinner oils work just as well and they're a lot easier to clean off. You can use something like motor honey and it'll work just fine, but it's sticky and hard to get off the part. When I was working as a tool maker, I used something called tap magic. And when you're tapping inch and a half thread into something, that is the way to go. I don't know what stuff's made out of, and it only works really well on steel. There's, well, I should take that back. The kind that I used was for steel. Couldn't use it on aluminum. Don't know what it was, but if you put it on aluminum, it foamed up. This clamp over to the side here. Just out of curiosity, if any of you guys have a special kind of tapping oil that you like to use, put it down in the comments. I'm always open to learning new things.
my friends Mitch and Dave have become featured channels on Old Sneelock's workshop. Please stop in and check out their channels. Tell them Old Sneelock sent you.